Hey everybody, what's poppin'? Tim Werner here from CBT Nuggets. Welcome to this micro nugget entitled Exam Review 7331 Core Solutions of Microsoft SharePoint 2013. Over the next handful of minutes, I'm going to walk you through this particular certification exam. I'm going to give you the need to know metadata up to the limit of my non disclosure agreement or NDA with Microsoft. I'm also going to give you a series of things to be careful of, gotchas, that if you're not prepared for, Prior to scheduling and taking your test, you're liable not to pass, to be honest. Things related to the content itself, especially the case study format, and the plethora, if you don't mind the $5 word, of interactive items. Let's get started. First of all, what is Exam 7331? Well, if you're watching this nugget, you probably have some notion that the 331 test is part of the Microsoft Certified Solutions Expert, or MCSE, for SharePoint 2013. And there are two exams, actually, in the MCSE. 331 is what Microsoft calls the core skill set. The 332 test, which I'm going to do a micro nugget on in the near future, so be on the lookout for that, deals with more special case stuff. Here we're talking about day-to-day -day SharePoint administration. Now, the S in SE stands for Solutions Expert. So you're going to see questions on your SharePoint test that deal with stuff outside of SharePoint, strictly speaking. You have to know quite a bit about SQL Server, IIS, Windows, and even in some cases Visual Studio, if you can believe it, in order to pass. Remember that the SharePoint stack is pretty broad. As far as your need to know metadata, you're looking at approximately five case studies. Yes, this is not just a pure multiple choice exam. You're given quite a bit of reading material in these tests, and you're going to be tested on your ability to interpret and synthesize the information that's in there. Now, the reasoning behind that is that you're putting on a fictional role. Maybe it's not fictional. Maybe you are a SharePoint consultant or solutions architect. So the idea is you want to meet with these different businesses and figure out what their requirements are and make suggestions along those lines. In addition to the case studies, you're likely to see a standalone bank of multiple choice questions that are not related to any case study. So you'll wind up with approximately 50 items in total. Microsoft gives you over two hours to complete the test. The passing score, which has been historic with Microsoft tests, is 70% or 700 on a scale of not 100, but 1,000. Know that the case studies are testlets, so you can navigate back and forth among questions within a particular case. But once you submit a case and go to the next one, there's no going back other than the review period where you can leave Microsoft comments. The other thing, like I said, you want to be careful of is that there are a lot of interactive items. I have taken this test. I've passed it, so I speak from experience. Content-related gotchas. Be aware, which I've already made you aware of, that this is a case study exam. Also, I'll show you examples of the interactive items in just a minute. But other than that, specifically, know your PowerShell. You will be asked a lot of PowerShell questions, not only identifying commandlets, but in some cases, syntax. If you've watched my CBT Nuggets training course for 7331, then you're in good shape. Another thing, know your central administration UI cold. You may very well be asked to point and click to a particular area of the interface that answers a question. I've written an article that goes along with this video, so check out the CBT Nuggets blog at blog.cbtnuggets.com for more tips than what I'm giving you here. Now, about the exam format, I've used a tool called Balsamic Mockups to mock up some images for you. The case study involves a lot of text, so make sure you're taking the exam in your best language if you're multilingual. You'll find that the interface is tabbed, and the cases all have the same general headings, things pertaining to business goals and technical goals, maybe future plans, challenges, and the tabs just simply filter the overall case. There's a button that you can press that you see the whole thing in one shot if you want to. I like the tabs because you can drill into specific aspects. And what you'll find in the case studies is a lot of bullet lists. And you'll want to pay attention because the questions you see will pertain to maybe one to three lines within one of those bullet lists. So to that point, my tips regarding the case studies are don't be overwhelmed. Take it a case at a time. Don't waste time trying to memorize the case. Instead, scan it to pick up its theme. Each case tends to have a particular theme. Maybe one is concerned with cloud integration with Office 365. Another one may be more of an upgrade. A third one might be dealing with business intelligence. 
and look at the major touch points. Okay, here they're talking about such and so, there they're talking about the other. You can always ping pong back and forth between the question and the case. So for each question, find the relevant lines in the case and use that as your basis. Do not read between the lines. Do not do that. Stick with exactly what information you're given and make no assumptions. Now, I shouldn't say all distractors are valid. A distractor is an incorrect answer choice. When you see these multiple choice questions, sometimes all of the choices are actual options, and you'll need to know what the best option or options are. Now, regarding those interactive items, these are items beyond the traditional select one or choose three, the traditional single answer, multiple choice, and multiple answer, multiple choice items. I'm going to finish this micro nugget by showing you examples of the three interactive item types. There's the drag and drop, the build list and reorder, and place the target. Microsoft has used these for a number of years now, probably almost 10 years by now. Drag and drop and build list and order are about the same. You're given a bunch of blocks where you're mentioned in the item stem. It'll say you may not use all the blocks and some blocks may be used more than once. A drag and drop is essentially a matching exercise where you just drag from the left and drop it in the appropriate spot on the right. The build list and reorder is tougher. There is where you'll be asked to select maybe three or four blocks and put them in the proper order. So that tests your ability not only to detect what goes into a procedure, but how that procedure is accomplished. That's pretty tough. Place the targets can be pretty easy as long as you know the central administration interface. You're going to see a user interface element on your screen. I'm showing you balsamic mockups here. And you're asked to literally click the mouse in the appropriate spot on the screen. Simple as that. My parting thoughts for you. As you know, you register for all Microsoft exams at Prometric.com. The exam is 150 USD per attempt. Look for discounts wherever possible. If you're a Microsoft certified trainer or Microsoft certified professional already, you can qualify for a discount. There's the second shot offer. There's the bundle offer. There's quite a bit going on there. This is a difficult exam. To be honest, when I submitted the, my exam at the end for grading, I wasn't sure I would pass, and I was mildly surprised to see that I had. This is a tough exam. It has tough content, and the case study presents its own challenges, and there's a lot of interactive items, and the build list and reorder are particularly difficult. So I'm not scaring you, but you do need to be forewarned. Best of luck to you, and please send me an email message with your experience and or leave comments here at YouTube. I hope that this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.